Hello and welcome to Habit Chat, everybody. We're so glad to have you here on this wonderful afternoon in Miramichi, New Brunswick at our Rogers Station. I'm your host for today's show, Judy Loger, joined by my beautiful effervescent co-host, Veronique Arsenault. <laughs> I look like I've been run over by a truck, Never. but that's okay. <laughs> Stop it. You're hard you. on yourself. <laughs> thank you. Welcome, welcome. And thank to you. our viewers, thank you for joining in each week. Mm -hmm. We always start, as you know, with a quote or a thought-provoking thought. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Veronique, you're up. Uh, yeah, and it, it's about creativity this t uh, this time okay. because I uh, we have some creative guests that are going to be joining us right. um, uh, throughout the show today, and and I I always say I am not creative, but I'm starting to learn it, ways that I am actually. But anyway, okay. so it's about creativity. Yes. So to live a creative life, we must lose our fear of being wrong. Being wrong. Mm -hmm. Let me think about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like for me, you know, because you. So oftentimes when you try something new or you do something that you've never done before or you, you know, I mean, I can't paint or sing <laughs> or, or draw in any way, but um, I, I love to give it a try. It sounds terrible. Mm -hmm. Like when I sing, I sound like I've stepped on a cat, um, but I do it anyway and it brings me joy. Okay, because I thought the quote was going to say, you, so read it again, so to live a creative life, we must lose our, our fear, fear of being wrong. So sometimes we don't uh -huh. try things because mm -hmm. we're afraid that it's not, we're not going to be, be good at it judged. or do it right or be judged or judged. do it wrong. Yeah. Um, I kind of, well, you know, I'm a creative person yes. and I think I express myself most creatively through my dress. Yes. Because I don't care what anyone else thinks yep. of how my style is. And I've always been that way. Yep. I don't know if I was born like that, but when I was three years old, if the kids were all wearing pink dresses, I wasn't going to, I didn't like pink dresses. So no. I would wear um, a nice uh, purple one, you know, yep. I've always had my own identity that way. And I think that everyone in life has the fear of being wrong. Yep. So we're going to be judged no matter if we think it's right in ourselves, we're doing our best. Uh, mm -hmm. Some people are going to say that's just wrong. I don't worry as much as I would way back when yep. that I am wrong because I don't really care at my age anymore. Right, yeah. I, I do what I think I'm going to do, uh, whether it's speak publicly and give a message. Some people say, well, what, where is she coming with that one? Um, I'm coming from a place that I feel authentically right in. Yes, absolutely. And I guess that's what it's all about is knowing that you're true to yourself and that being creative, whether on stage, at a microphone, or through your attire, yeah. um, is a step in bravery. And I think I've conquered that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Now, now. I, absolutely. And I, and, I, and I know that about you too. I'm at and that I think, point. You know, but I think a lot of people, and I, I think... Uh, and I've seen this a few times now lately on social media where it's, you know, we think that we have to be an expert at something to enjoy it, or we have to make money at it to enjoy it, or we have to be, you know, but like, again, I, I last year I started writing, mm. I have a blog and, and, right. and I haven't, I haven't written in a while. I got, I got away from it, but it, it was terrifying to me because I'm like, well, I, you know, I've never taken any writing courses. I, you know, yeah. I, I don't know if I'm good at it or not, but it really... It brought me a lot of joy at the time. And a creative leap. Yeah. And so it's it, it was interesting to me that I didn't need to be sure that I was good at it. I didn't need to be right. sure that Validate. anybody would read it. I just needed to enjoy it while I was doing it. I love it. Yeah. I think that's a great quote yeah. and it did make me think. There you go. Now, my sister is home all the way from Barcelona, yes. Spain. She's been living over there for almost four years now. Jennifer, I want to welcome you. Uh, she's been on her show actually before. Yeah. So, hey, Jenny, we love having you home. Hey, Mom and Dad and all of my family. And I want to give a special shout out to my nephew, my sister Colleen's son, who is going to be in the production Cinderella. I can't wait. I can't I know. wait. He's going to be Prince Charming to yeah. the lovely Kate Berry. Who we've had on the show. Yes, yeah, Cinderella. <laughs> she's amazing as yeah. well. Can't wait. So, this will be fun. It is happening at Miramichi Valley High School, which is at 365 McKenna Avenue. So that would be Miramichi West. And it's taking place on April 20th to 23rd. Tickets are at the door. It's a 7 p.m. production. Um, but you can also reserve them at, by calling 627-4083. Again, 627-4083 to reserve. And there is also a Saturday matinee, which is April 22nd at 2 p.m. Amazing. So, show up at the door, support our local theater, and that's what I have to say. Bravo to all of the uh, all of the people in the production. I can't wait to see it. I can't yeah. wait to see it. And they're all so talented. Okay, lady, tell us all about your wild 
last <laughs> few days. Yeah, so I uh, ended up in Vegas last week. <laughs> and what happened in Vegas is going to be told now. And yeah, have a chat. On, on yeah on uh, on TV now. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, listen, I had a I had a wonderful time. It was a very yes. short trip. I mm -hmm. flew in Wednesday morning uh, and landed about eleven o'clock in the morning. They're four hours different. I know. They're four hours behind I us, know. which nearly killed me. And then I left Friday night at midnight. <laughs> You're a trooper there. And flew back. But you know what? I had I had I walked. I explored. I the weather was amazing. Yes. It was about you know 27 to 30 degrees. Mm. And um, I you know had a couple of adventures uh, while I was down there. I had some amazing food. Yeah, you showed me some pictures. Oh. I was salivating. I well truly. Oh. And and I never thought I'd rave about mashed potatoes. But oh. Jenny's mashed potatoes from Joe's Seafood and Steakhouse are incredible. I want your tips next time I go to Vegas yeah. on the food places. Oh, that, that interests They were me. fantastic, oh. fantastic. And I and I went zip lining. So zip lining has become a thing for me. I, mean, yeah, I, I get I get quite terrified as yeah. I because I, I make the decision that I'm going to go. So yes. this is about my fifth time going zip lining is now. Is it? Yeah, in different places like around, yes. including Miramichi. Oh. And so I make the decision I'm going to go, and then I have a panic attack as I'm going up the elevator and you know into the structure <laughs> and then I sit there as they strap you in and I continue to have my panic attack and continue to say why am I doing this this yeah. is a terrible idea but exhilarating and then they hit the button and it is the best thing ever it's like flying I love it it's like a bird it, it is like I am a bird <laughs> I, I ask like you have there ever this is a terrible question because yeah. I don't want to hear the answer have there ever been any instances of people like falling or un I'm unfastening? sure I'm sure there have been I don't I mean it's funny because I will not go bungee jumping no. For whatever reason, bungee jumping seems to me like the more dangerous okay, of the things okay. to do. Yeah. And I don't know that that's true. Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm sure that there probably have been. Just like the you know, the rides at the exhibition, yeah. there are, have been accidents, but don't hear about it much. No, no. So and I mean like they're you're very safety harnessed in yes, and, you yes, know yes. And, and things like that. So oh. and then I had this very um weird experience. So I was shopping in, in the mall and there was this little shop. And, and it was called Dr. Fish Spa. Dr. Fish Spa. Yeah, Dr. Fish Spa. And so um, you sit down in a, a pedicure chair, we'll call it, and there is a little tank of water, and you put your feet in it, and the little fishies eat off the dead skin. Ew, yeah. <laughs> It went for 15 minutes. They chew the they sole chew. of your foot and get rid of dead skin. They chew on I your feet. I would love that job of emptying that water. Would that be a lovely job? Oh. Everyone's like little uh, bucket of yeah. de dead flesh and then bleh. Yeah. It was it was oh. the weirdest thing I have ever done. So they nibbled, you could feel it, they'd like taken off yep. the, the skin. So, so, what's your feet like feel afterwards? There has to be a benefit to this. They felt like butter. They, they were so soft. Okay, because all that fluff, yeah. skin sloughed off. Yeah. Remind me not to go, but I know. <laughs> I just continue to use foot cream to soften mine. <laughs> it, was, it was the oddest feeling ever. Well, I will, I, yeah. I, and I, somebody asked me if I would go back, and I said I would go back. Like if if the girls wanted to go or whatever, and they wanted to try it, I would go back. But I wouldn't go back like on purpose myself. No. But it was an experience. It was a first. It was a first. Well, let's talk for a minute uh, or two about this big thing. It's not new, but mm -hmm. it's, it's seeming to be um, increasingly popular. Is the cold water immersion? I'm very interested in that. Okay, so there are benefits and mm -hmm. there are disadvantages mm -hmm. or actual health concerns because mm -hmm. of when you plunge yourself into ice cold water, you could get hypothermia, mm -hmm. you could have the lungs affected. Obviously, your heart can be affected. So it's something that I would say, even though there are benefits, that you should consult your physician right, with, absolutely, right? Because yeah. you could have underlying problems but the benefits they say it um, it's so wonderful and it's it's known to um, help increase your um, like reduce I should say your inflammation in your body right, yes okay it yeah. increases libido <laughs> Oh yeah. So, um, oh, all right then. <laughs> Giddy up, Judy. Everyone will be plunging now as we're yeah. talking. Um, and it also is very good for your mental health. They say. Really? Eh? Yeah. I would. I could see how it would improve circulation, right? Oh, get, for sure. Get that blood flowing. Um, I, I, I'm really interested because I know that there's a, um, a place that does it outside of Moncton, and it's something oh. I'd like to, to try. Yeah. But <clears throat> I don't know. I don't like to be cold either. No. So I, but. 
the benefits yeah. are there if you're not, yeah. like I said, potentially at risk for other things. Yeah. But to actually sit in a, like, uh, even not a lukewarm bath, I can't handle it. I like my, I said my pool yeah. has to be at a very high temperature. I yeah. don't do well with a lot of air conditioning. No. I'm always cold. Yeah. And thus this top in, yeah, in April. Know. But <laughs> that's okay. I'm always loving to, you know, put yeah. on air conditioning and dress yeah. appropriately. But, yeah. but I just thought, have you ever done that? And I have not yet sat in cold no. ice water. No, me either. And I, I, I would like to try it because I, you know, I've seen, I've seen a lot about it and I've seen a lot of people um, who have said that there are a lot of benefits to it. Mm -hmm. I, I can't imagine the feeling of it. No. Um, but I also never imagined I've had, I'd, I'd have fish nibbling on my dead skin. So the next time we go to Vegas, I'll go shopping and you can go visit the fish again. Very good. Uh, I did want to touch on the coronation that's coming up yes. in May of King Charles. Yes. That they have announced that Prince Harry mm -hmm. will be attending mm -hmm. without his wife. And they figure that he's trying to, you know, obviously he still loves his dad. The life yep. that he broke away from was not the ideal one for him, obviously. Yep. I read the book Spare. Yep. I still am on, personally, sorry folks, if you don't like it, I'm on Team Harry yep. and Meghan. And I think that it's their life and they've chose to talk about their life and yeah. whether people like it or not like I said before it's it's their choice mm -hmm. um, and that if she did go she'd be booed by the British public oh, sure. which they would boo her yeah so why would she go and put herself up for that yeah no I don't I don't blame her for not going and I also think you know I mean I I can't who knows what I would do in that situation but I also think I if if my husband wanted to I would encourage him to go to something like, yes. you know, if he could, to, to continue that link to the family. And, yeah. and, and also, I, I could understand stepping out and saying, you, you go do it, and then mm. I'll, I'll stay home. I don't, I don't think he'd be well received. I yeah. think, you know, having read the book and not giving too much away, that his relationship was never the most kosher with his mm. brother, Will, mm. who he called Willie. Mm. And, uh, and uh, they do not appreciate or like Megan. Yeah. And, the monarchy yeah. so I can see why he would leave her back it's gonna be Archie's fourth birthday mm. and uh, well it'll be interesting I think it's it, he'll be the second most talked about person on that day of I'm the sure. coronation unfortunately sure. he'll be just in the limelight and yeah. he's used to that yeah you know he's been used to being scrutinized and put down and and um, I really did enjoy his memoir Inter yeah see I haven't read it yet but um, I've always you know I've always felt so bad for both Will and Harry mm -hmm. um, uh, William, because you know that that life and uh, the life that they were thrust into, and and with Diana dying so yes, young, yes. like how incredibly difficult it must have been, and to try and forge your own path, yeah, I know. you know, in your own life, and have your own thoughts and things like that in that environment. I can't even imagine. And then falling in love with somebody that wasn't royalty, right. having you know married this actress, which to me they were down on her to start with. She's yeah. an she's an actress. You know yeah. what would she know about etiquette? And yeah. and she didn't really. Yeah. Uh, but absolutely. So you know, I would say to read the book and make your own yeah. judgment. But what I liked about the memoir was that he didn't just paint himself as the saint. Right. He wasn't like I am Prince Harry and I am perfect and my life was all terrible because mm. of what they did to me he talks about his own vices Good. he talks about his colored mm. you know adventures and he's not shy to talk about it Good for him. and he's not slamming them he's not putting them down mm -hmm. he doesn't crucify anybody in the book mm -hmm. so I really really liked his take on it and I was rather impressed good well it'll be interesting to see and I mean like you know a coronation of course we haven't seen one in 70 years so it'll be interesting to yeah. to see what that is going to look like and and from you know king charles's perspective for him to put his stamp on his own mon monarchy know. now I you know, know. No, I, I think just everyone should read the book and be the judge and we'll see what happens at the yeah. coronation but good for him to go i just try to make that yeah interesting that happen um, I just had a couple. We have, you know, very few minutes, probably five to break, mm -hmm. Vera. So I just wanted to ask you, pull from my little questions, mm -hmm. which we sometimes do yes. for fun, yes. as we did one day. Mm -hmm. um, what do you not know about the hosts on the show? Yes. We've been doing this for almost nine years. I know. I have a question that I want to ask you, and it's very, very directed. Okay. What is one piece of advice that you would give to me if you knew I wouldn't get offended? Oh, dear Lord. Um... That's a hard one. No, it doesn't have to be cruel. No, no, but, but I no, like I, one piece of advice you you know me so well. I do. You've known me for most of your life, and so what one piece of advice would you give me if you knew I wouldn't get offended? Um, I think ah, uh, you know what? <laughs> I, that's a hard one. Uh oh. I, no, that's a hard one because I I don't know I don't even know like if so my only thing I would say is I know that 
um, you uh, you take although you you do uh, not take what other people say um, to heart at you know that yes, you, you you walk your own path but it would be to to know that um, that people say terrible things sometimes and they shouldn't and not to take it to heart yes 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 you know and, and that that is so much easier said than done because I am just like you in yes. that I take it right to my heart and then it sits with me and would you tell me if you heard things that were being nasty said about me or would you spare me I would tell you if, if I thought if I if someone was saying something awful about you I would tell you not not to be around that person yes you would but I would not say to, I would not necessarily tell you the terrible things they said because I wouldn't want to hurt you but I would say you know what no but I would say you know what that person isn't your isn't your friend Judy or don't so we'll save this whole thing for another show yeah, no. right no but you know what I mean like I would say that person isn't your friend I don't think you should be with them yes, be around yes, them yes, anymore so you defend me yeah yeah um, when it came to giving you advice on something that I think wouldn't offend you, I think that sometimes you're so, you're too nice. Okay. Like, you're so sweet. And I guess I'm just a more outspoken, mm -hmm. feisty, fiery, maybe too quick tempered. Mm -hmm. And you're always nice. And you're, you know, you know, you're always forgiving. And even though someone might do you wrong. No. <laughs> really? No. Because I don't see you, um, I don't, I, I don't mean not stand up for yourself, but if someone was be, being mean, for example, as you said, towards myself, mm -hmm. that you would you would stand up and, and speak up. Like, oh, you absolutely. hold things in. I, I, I do, I hold, I hold my own things in, but it, I absolutely, if someone were saying something about you or somebody that was close to me, I would absolutely say to them, yeah. uh, no, you can't like stop that, that's not true or whatever, yeah. absolutely. Um, yeah. I, but see, for me, I tend to do that kind of stuff mm away from people okay. right so or behind closed doors or in a separate vent. conversation um i i vent all the time um to people to you i vent to you um but for me i think so so i've made so many mistakes in my life that i will often understand that oh, that people are coming okay. from either a, a terrible place in their life when okay. they say some things and i will will account for it. Mm -hmm. I won't forget it no, or forgive no. it, but I will move on from it. I've I broken ties that. with friends. I love that. Yeah. So I just thought sometimes where, you know, you would be able to speak up and s I, that you just remain, which is awesome. Sometimes I've got to get it out there though. Yeah. Like I will often do that like um, away from the situation. Right. Well, that was a good discussion. Yeah. <laughs> we are going to say, don't go far. Veronique and I are going to be very shortly joining you again for more Have a Chat. And we have our first guest on board. Don't go too far. Thanks. Hello and welcome back to Have a Chat. It's a pleasure to have you with us this afternoon. And I'm your host for today's show, Judy Loge, joined by my lovely co-host, Veronique Arsenault, freshly back from Las Vegas. Yep, no sleep. Baby, no sleep, <laughs> no but sleep. ready to go. Yes. Thank you for being back and on today. Yes. And we have our, our first guest and our first time guest. I know. For the show, and it's Jamie McDonald. Hello, thank you ladies for having me today. We're so excited. I watched this little beauty grow up. Oh, did you? Yes, yeah. I did. <laughs> Just down the street from me, and she's lovely, and I've watched her, you know, mm -hmm. become this awesome woman. Mm -hmm. So, Jamie, you're here to talk to us about Coffee and Connections Women's Club. Yes. But, which I don't know anything about, but first of all, tell us a little bit of the viewers about yourself. Well, I am born and raised in Miramichi. I'm a Chatham girl. <laughs> uh, I lived here. As are we. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> we're going to get along great. <laughs> um, I lived here until I went off to university, went to St. Thomas um, for Yay. four years and got my Bachelor of Arts. Oh, good. And then I kind of traveled around. I've lived in Halifax, hmm. Moncton, and Toronto, oh, yeah. but I am back home. Yeah, Always yes. come home. Yes. We all do. Yeah, we always end up <laughs> yeah, home. Even so when nice. we said yeah. our whole life, I will never come back, right. we always come back, right? There's no That's place right. like home. There's That's no right. place like home. So I actually worked as a correctional officer for five years. Oh, wow. That. Yeah, and then I decided to just quit, pack my bags, fill my car up as much as I could, 
and I drove to Toronto and I was a flight attendant. You were? I didn't know all of this. Oh my yes. goodness. So I I've kind of had all the jobs. Yeah. So I lived in Toronto for about a year as a flight attendant. Yeah. I packed, I literally packed up my car and moved in with a, a stranger. I pulled up, they were outside waiting for me, never met them before. Yeah, an adventure. <laughs> oh my goodness. Very adventuresome young lady yeah. and brave. And actually as a flight attendant, it was the first time I ever left Canada. Did you enjoy that job? Really? I don't think I could do it personally. That's why I'm asking you. I did, but there's a lot of pros and cons oh, to that job. I don't think I could do that. Well, no, and it's funny because I so I had to take four flights to 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 Vegas and yeah. two coming back, yeah. and I and the the lovely ladies, I just don't I I couldn't mm. I couldn't do it. They put up with a lot. It's a lot more work than people yeah people think it you is. You have yes. the personality, the people skills, but yeah. it's a lot more than that. It yeah. is, yeah. So that's because you're just, you're actually like responsible for the passengers, like for their lives. Yes, yeah. Like it's not you're not just serving coffee. Tea. It you're, was the hardest training yeah. I've ever had to yeah. do to yeah. be. Yeah. I can, all I can understand that. that. Yeah, yeah. And you, yeah. And now I'm back home, and I work for the federal government here. So yeah. so nice to have you home, Jamie. Thank you. It's good to be home. Mm -hmm. You're stuck with me now. <laughs> <laughs> we all take it. We love it. <laughs> it's um, so. Tell us about Coffee and Connections, your women's club. Like, what is it? <laughs> so, it actually started off in the fall, well, end of summer, fall of 2022. So it's pretty new. Um, and it actually just started off as a hiking group because oh. I was looking to do hiking on the weekends at French Fork Cove and I do the advanced trail. I didn't really want to be out alone doing mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. especially like as a woman by yourself or yeah. just what if you get hurt and you're yeah. stuck in there 45 minutes mm -hmm. without service. So I was like, oh, I'm going to start a group and see if anyone is interested in hiking with me. So it kind of started off as that. Um, and then it was starting to come into winter, mm -hmm. dreaded winter, but I really didn't want to stop meeting all these new people because we were getting yeah. like seven, 10 people, different people every weekend. So it was so awesome meeting all these new mm. people. So I was like, maybe we can start meeting for coffees while it's cold out, That's nice. support some local businesses, coffee shops, and see what happens. So we started meeting once, twice a month for coffee. So we pick a different coffee place every, oh. every weekend or every other weekend. And then I was like, well, wouldn't it be fun to have events with these women mm -hmm. and like connect with women and do some other things with women? Huh. So then I was like, hmm, maybe we'll do some fundraisers. So it started off as a hiking group with like 50 people, and now it's we do events, fundraisers. We've already done four fundraisers in 2023, and donated to four different That's organizations here. How do I not here. know about this? <laughs> I know. Like you do now. Yes. Yeah, I, I this guess. is why we yeah. have her. I know. Yeah. I'm so, impressed. And we have almost 700 members, and it's all women. What? So it's really, really amazing mm -hmm. to have all these women come together to do these events. Because it's, it's not me. It's these, well, it's women volunteers who are... For example, we had like a yoga and a sip and stretch, we called it. Mm. So, you know, we had a woman teach yoga. She volunteered her time and her proceeds. And yeah, it's been like really amazing. I've probably growing. met like hundreds of new, Isn't new women. It's, growing it's and so growing. awesome. So what would Veronique and I be able to do? Like what would our first thing, like if it's hiking, see you later. <laughs> um, I'll take a hike, literally. I would be We're not doing the advanced <laughs> trail at, at, at French Fort Cove, no. So, <laughs> What else could be like? Do we just drink coffee and then look at all you lovely ladies? And well, <laughs> so sometimes we meet for coffee. So, for example, some of the fundraisers we did in January, we did a paint night with oh, Ali Howe. Oh, lovely! So amazing. He's great. Okay. Um, and then we did a sip and stretch. So we did yoga and then had like a, a beverage after. That's um, nice. an adult beverage. Yeah, an adult That's beverage. That's really nice. And just chit chat. And, and then chit chat. So we did the yoga and then it was like a social hour after. And we did the same thing with Zumba. That oh. was really fun. So that and coffees, just hiking, walking. Um, we've been doing a four-week walk in downtown Newcastle on Saturday morning. Ooh, so nice. just, just a brisk walk, Judy. Yeah. <laughs> I could do that, Jamie. I could just do that. Just a brisk walk. I see you walking your dog. You I could do a brisk walk. walk. My dog. I love my dog. <laughs> yes. That's, and your top is amazing. So yes. do you have to order those and get those done for all the women or just who wanted them? Just who wanted them. Love I'm it. always wearing my coffee and connection I love stuff. that. Yes. <laughs> Cozy. I know. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I loved it. Um, so... From that, you've also started volunteering, right? Yes. So um, why was it, with those fundraisers, why was it important for you to give back? I think a part of it is just, I've always, every city I've gone to, I've always stayed involved with volunteering. So when I lived in Moncton, I 
volunteered for the Humanity Project, which is a homeless shelter mm -hmm. um, where they feed like one to 200 mm -hmm. homeless, seniors, et cetera. And then I also was a part of Needle Awareness where we got called out to do pick up dirty needles mm -hmm. around town. Mm -hmm. I think for me, it's just so important to, I don't know, to make it home, to be involved in mm -hmm. the community, right? Like mm -hmm. it's important because nowhere can be home. You can always not feel home, but you make it home, right? That's right. Yeah. So giving back to the community, I think is so important and just to be involved. Love That's it. That's amazing. Love right? it. Do. And she's Miss, you know, fitness here too. <laughs> Underneath that sweatshirt, I folks, know. is the body. I know. <laughs> the body. I, know. I mean, totally impressive your working out regime and your accomplishments through physical fitness and wellness and all of that. So what happened just recently in PEI? Tell us all about uh, that. I'm still on cloud nine. Of course, okay. I'm still on cloud nine over that. So this week, past weekend, we went to PEI with four um, women I had training with me as transformation clients. And uh, two of them brought home medals, which is amazing, but all four did absolutely amazing. Like yes. I'm so impressed, so proud. Um, it was so different to go because usually I'm the one bodybuilding, bodybuilding, you, you competed, and competing. Right? Yeah. I've competed three times, so usually I'm the one backstage, nervous about going on stage. But this time I was backstage, more nervous yes, than I ever was yeah. competing. So I was literally, I think back, and I was like that. You know, Mean Girls mom, that's the video <laughs> camera, and she's like telling them what to do while they're on stage, even though they can't see you. And I'm just yeah. like, and you could hear me probably from Miramichi, honestly. So I was you were like, the coach. Mm. I was the coach. Wow. Yeah, so I had brought a girl um, in October. She did transformation, and she, one of my best friends too. So that was an amazing experience. And then this time I brought a team of four. So and transformation, it's, is it? It's three. It's twelve weeks, eh? This one was fourteen. Oh, okay. Fourteen weeks. Yeah. yeah. So they started January seventh and they did their final way in April 10th and they all it, I just I can't I don't even have words I'm so mm. proud of them what exactly is transformation so for them it's different than bodybuilding anyone can do a transformation but it has to do more with just like weight loss it's like an overall oh, transformation okay. so they do do their weight and measurements but they also like write an essay um, mm. and get to tell their story and it's Neat. It was really moving. Yeah, I'm sure. Can I ask really you a question? Moving. I mean, I'm a slim person and I eat healthy and I walk. Other than that, I'm not fit fit. You know, there's a difference between being small and being fit and toned. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. How long would you think would take me at my age of 45, 55 yes. or <laughs> um, at my age, I'm going with to get actually fit? Like, like I'm talking like not bodybuilder, but just really fit. A little serious. It's at, different at over for 16. everybody, okay. but like over three months of consistency, six months of consistency, you'll see the changes as long as you're consistent. Small, small start. changes, small, small start. start. Yeah, I like to start small. Like, I'm not going to say, "Hey, do two hours of cardio and two hours of exercise," because oh, you're going to be like, "I'm not going to do that." I'm not coming back. <laughs> yeah, I'm not coming yeah. back. Yeah. So you know, you make small changes first. Like maybe if you just walk, maybe you'll add in. Some weight training two three times a week yes, yes, yes. Maybe light weights and then move your way up and it can be you done. would notice changes i wouldn't be in a competition but i'd like to feel look at yeah you could be in a competition no i'd like to feel that level of fitness yes. though do you yeah. know what i'm saying not just good for my health my heart feel um, strong and mentally but i would like to be toned yeah. it's empowering toned. to feel strong yeah yep. like to me don't look at the scale yeah. it doesn't matter there's something so empowering for a woman to just like feel strong yeah. and feel happy in you your look skin. so healthy you look like you sleep and very neat and i don't sleep is that a huge component to i'm saying seriously sleep is a huge factor in well-being sleep is very important you should get your sleep how i can't how i want i want to i want to i want to be in a club. i want to be in a long-term relationship with sleep me too like i really do and i and i've i've worked on it i have done i read everything i watch videos I, I eat, I, I drink tart cherry juice. Mm -hmm. I'm like, please just let me sleep. And I don't. I know. Heart, sleeping is hard. It took me a long time to figure out my tricks, but everyone's are different. Mm -hmm. I don't drink caffeine after a certain time. Like in the morning. Like I try to have my second cup at noon and that's it. But me too. And then I actually started meditating in December oh. and I just listened to a, a YouTube video and sometimes it's like, they're on an elevator and they're on the 20th floor and I'm asleep probably by floor like 17. You train yourself. Yeah, you just to train yourself, yourself into yeah. unwinding and sleeping. I yeah. guess that, 
my mind doesn't shut off and that's the whole thing. I've got so much on my plate. But I, I had this really interesting quote that just see it on my J Connection? Yes. It was awesome. It was somebody told me never to t uh, bite off more than I could chew, mm. but I would much rather choke on greatness than uh, nibble on mediocrity. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Oh, I love that because people always tell me you do too much, and I'm like, but I love it. Like yes. I love. Or we wouldn't do it, right? Well, and and uh, yeah, I think you're very similar to us <laughs> in that you get your energy. From from doing that stuff, from doing right? Stuff, from yeah. giving back, from mm -hmm. being involved, from being and you, you know, do doing with other people, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and I mean, I and I, truly, I sleep is the thing. And it, mm -hmm. you know, people say, well, don't use it as a flex. It's not a flex for me. I I would love to sleep. sleep. I like it <laughs> I is know. it is the thing I wish the most. <laughs> I no. sleep. Every but time I text you, you just sleep. No. No, 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 no. You know, and then you get like one good night out of 10, and it's like, oh my God, I slept for five so hours. Good. This is awesome. And then I feel terrible because it's not enough. But you're but. super healthy, Jamie, so you're feeling you. at your best. I am feeling at my best, yeah. Mm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so you've, but you've gotten involved uh, recently with uh, Ground Search and Rescue. So mm. tell us about that. I absolutely love Ground Search and Rescue. Me too. And I'll do my I'll do my flex. We're always looking for volunteers. Yes. No, but I absolutely <laughs> admire yeah. that organization. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's I couldn't have picked a better organization mm -hmm. yeah. to volunteer for. And like I, it kind of the reason it drew me, I guess, in is like I said, I was in correction, so I was kind of used to being like on, on a front line, and so I like that. I don't know. I just like the thought of being back onto the front line, helping people when mm -hmm. they really need mm -hmm. it. And you know, there's the being fit is a good aspect. Definitely. That, and I just I the people mm -hmm. I've met through Ground Search and Rescue already, and I just started like in 2023 with them, mm -hmm. is incredible. Like ex-military, everyone with amazing stories and yep. so much training they offer. Good. Like unreal training yeah. that they offer and. Dad loves it. You have to be yeah, a special your dad type, is though. Dad loves unreal, it. Unreal, yeah. He is amazing. Yeah. Dad loves it. It's you know what, and it's given him a real like he's been home three years now, mm -hmm. and he still talks about he wishes he could go back to work. And dad's right. gonna dad's seventy seven, right? And so he, but it has given him those connections. It's given him that being out, being you know productive, being actually searching and helping Vital. you know looking mm -hmm. for people. And it's really for him. It's been he, I mean he'd never admit to it, but it. For him, it's been amazing, and mm -hmm. for me to watch that for him mm -hmm. is what has been wonderful. Yeah, it's awesome. There's a lot of retired people yeah. on Ground Search and Rescue. There's a lot to learn from all these people. Yeah. Yeah. They're awesome. They're so knowledgeable. Their training, like I said, is, is yeah. unreal. And you have to be kind of fearless too, because you don't know. You know, you're out there in a search, and you're looking, and you're hoping, and you're the family's waiting. Uh, you know, loved mm -hmm. ones are just saying, "Oh, please bring that person back for the, you know, peace of mind mm -hmm. and closure." But at the same time, um, yeah, you have to be that certain person. Yeah. It's like a first responder, I could never be a paramedic. Right. No. It's just not in me. No. Yeah, because it's not always good news. Good news. No, it's no, not. So you have to be prepared outcome. for that, too. Yeah. Jamie, what is next for you? Like, I mean, like, oh <laughs> what's your next adventure with this coffee and connections? Or do you have one lined up? I have lots of ideas. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned. Okay. But I I just want to keep growing, and I want, I want coffee and connections to be a safe place for women to come together and like there's only women in the group i i love our group it's it just makes me smile thinking about this group because it's so active and i even had a girl at one of our events she was she came up to me and said she had just moved here from moncton mm. and she's like i'm so thankful for this group today yes. tonight i made some connections and i made like made some friends tonight and she was right. a young girl and so it's hard to meet women adults like we just had covid yeah. for two years locked inside so right? important yeah. to connect i started my job from home Virtually. so mm -hmm. i only know the six people i see on a yeah. screen when yeah. i meet them for their meetings so yeah. we're just going to continue to grow more fundraisers and yeah the word so i have had young women come to me that have moved here and i didn't really know all about this until now so you know the moms or they have said you know how can my young daughter so that's the first part of the question is how old would you have to be as a young adult woman? Mm -hmm. 18, 19, 19, 19, plus, 19, 19 yeah. plus. Okay. Yeah. And I think she is. So she's lonely. She doesn't mm -hmm. have any friends. So mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you how this person or others in that same situation could reach you and be part of this whole. Yeah, for sure. Thing. So we have a private Facebook group. It's just Coffee and Connections and an Instagram Coffee okay. and Connections. So Facebook. She, yeah. Yep. Facebook. And she just requests to join. It's private so that we don't have anyone join that. Right. Isn't a woman, yep. and uh, 
she can just request and we she'll be in the group and I think that's really yeah. good and I've been putting that word out yeah, there for absolutely. these people that have been asking how do I fit in how do I get to know other absolutely. women and we are a special it's hard. breed we're the best absolutely. species there is we absolutely. really are and when we come together we are forced to be reckoned with women rock <laughs> we do I swear to the guys <laughs> I agree. today uh, they had our next guests are like darn it. <laughs> no, I, no 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 we love them coming on to man power we love those males but um, yeah. I'm just so pleased so yeah. any last words before we go just thank you guys so much for having me and it was an honor to sit with two powerful women right here. Thank so you. I loved it. We try, eh, Farrell? We have our moments. We give our best. We do. We absolutely do. We do. And I want, I think I would like to get one of those t-shirts so I you have to fill me in afterwards as to ordering it and all of that. So I want to thank our viewers for listening and uh, being with Veronique and I for this part of our Have a Chat and the lovely Jamie McDonald for joining us mm -hmm. with Coffee and Connections and she's making things happen with her group on the river and surrounding areas. Yes. So don't go too far, ladies and gentlemen, because we have two lovely gentlemen. Yes. We do like the men too, you yes. know, yes. Uh, coming back to join us. And you might want to pick up a coffee or tea or a little snack and come back for more. Have a always chat. A There's always, always something good to share on this show. Yes. All right. <laughs> We're going to go to break. Thank you. Welcome back to our last set of Have a Chat. It's glorious here in Miramichi, New Brunswick. We are at the Rogers Studio Live, and it will be taped all week long for those you want to pass it on to that the show airs once, at least once a day, if not twice, all week. So I'm Judy Loger, your host for today's show, joined by my lovely co-host. I'm so happy to be with Veronique Arsenault. Happy to be here too, Judy. Yes, in our last part of the show, we have two fine gentlemen who, we were certainly not bashing men earlier, we were just saying that women are better, that's all. I know. That's right. Yeah. So welcome, it's Dr. Sean McCarthy, mm -hmm. who's PhD in history, I know. he's a pretty bright guy. And the other bright guy is Thomas Daly. Welcome. Thank you very much. Both very, very talented <laughs> gentlemen. I know Sean, I don't know Thomas, and you may know both. But for anyone who does not know you watching the show, tell us about yourself. A few things personally. Sean? Oh, well, uh, I'm from Nelson <coughs> originally. Uh, and uh, as I say, was born, brought up there, graduated from James M. Hill, uh, went away for a fair number of years and studied history at, in, in Halifax, uh, in Fredericton, and then in London, Ontario. Mm, yes. uh, and uh, Folks may remember me from uh, from my time at Bow Bears Island. I was there for 21 seasons uh, as a volunteer. 21. Yep. Wow. Wow. So they couldn't so. get rid of me. They had to promote me. They got, uh, yeah. <laughs> eventually, yeah. So yeah. my last my last tenure there was as the executive director. Yeah. Uh, and right now, I am the uh, project manager for the Miramichi Historical Linkages Project, talking about how Miramichi's history connects our community to other communities, nationally and internationally. And of course, most importantly for our purposes here today, yeah. uh, co-founder of Character Matters Miramichi with my good friend, Thomas Daly. He's not Can't busy at all. I can't wait to hear more about that because <laughs> I'm not in the know about I that. Know. And this is new information for I me know. too, just as it was with Jamie's group. Yeah. What's your turn, sir, Thomas Daly? Uh, now then, now then. I uh, mm -hmm. grew up in Simiwagan Ridge, uh, in Barnaby River area. I uh, went to James M. Hill, been friends with Sean for 30 years. I, uh, Is that all? Uh, yeah, about 30 years. Yeah. Maybe a little more. I can't yeah. remember. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we got working together with the Headless Nun Tour way back in 2004. From mm. there, I worked with them at uh, Bull Bears Island. From there, I went away to Halifax and worked on Trailer Park Boys. I came back, got to play at the Black Horse Tavern, the Miramichi Hotel, got some interesting life experience there. No kidding. Uh, from there, I went out to Vancouver for acting. I studied acting at Vancouver Film School, acting for television and film. I uh, got to do all sorts of little blink if you miss me roles. Mm -hmm. I was a guest at Superman's wedding. I got to talk to Tom Cruise and a few other things. <laughs> uh, the stuff I liked most of all that was working for Taste Vancouver Food Tours. A shout out to them. If there's anybody in Vancouver from there that happens to be watching, I absolutely mm. love that job. I did food tours of Vancouver mm. where I got to portray oh. a historic character. Back yeah. to the historic characters yeah. again, Gassy Jack. Had tons of fun because I got to act, interact with all sorts of people from all around the world. Gosh. Got to eat at some of the very best mm. restaurants in that city. Oh, that sounds like a perfect job! Oh, we're fantastic. jealous. It's fantastic. I'd like to do something with that in Miramichi. Okay, yes. do board. it. Yeah, I'm on board. <laughs> Another job I had was MC at an Irish pub on Grenville Street, and that one was a lot of fun because Looking. it was my job to talk to people, make sure they enjoyed themselves, oh. and they stayed in the best Irish pub. 
and I met a girl there that became my wife. Ah, oh, that's so yes, nice. On the very first night I was working there, I met really? a delightful oh Swedish girl yeah. by the name of Clara. And uh, fast forward, I followed her over to Sweden, did a little bit more acting over there, where I got to be in a Swedish cell phone commercial, at the very least. Uh, not a whole lot of other acting jobs, but I did travel around mm -hmm. Europe quite a bit mm -hmm. and saw a lot. And mm -hmm. now I'm back here in business with my good friend, Sean. Well, That's there amazing. we go. And we have some audio issues, but... Okay. This is why Tom closes. He's yes. got a much better story. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's amazing. Why do you want to ask them? I, I find this amazing. So, um, Sean, tell us a little bit about uh, Character Matters, Miram Shi, and what is it? So, uh, basically, it's a heritage theater company. Uh, so, specializing in first-person interpretation, so historical characters like the, like the kind that Tom has done, mm -hmm. uh, both in Vancouver and here, and as I've done at Bow Bears and other places. Uh, so yeah, so what we're doing is uh, looking at mm. uh, original stories and original talent uh, from here in the river and kind of forefronting that uh, in a series of theatrical productions and interactive tours. Mm, that's amazing. Mm, I think so too. Well, where was this inspired, uh, like someone had to start this, so you collaborated with each other, you two, on this? Absolutely, yeah. just you two? We talked about it for uh, at least five to ten years, and I think the groundwork was really laid in about 2016, Sean. Mm -hmm. You came uh, to visit, and uh, we really started thinking about all these great stories that Miramar she has. Miramar she has a gold mine of stories, mm -hmm. and what is acting? It is telling a story with voice and movement. So mm -hmm. that's where I come in. Sean cool. is, of course, the, the history book, the knowledge. <laughs> yes, he thing. is. <laughs> he is. And if you look at our logo, you'll see it. it's the dramatic mask rising out of a history book. Oh, so okay. we combine the two things and uh, ah, yeah. lots of oh my gosh they've well, achieved I, I, I find you know um, the whole process of, of creating and, and acting so fascinating because mm. I, I do not have that skill oh, I did yes, I, no I, 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 I could but I, I I did act in one one play, but I can't remember the lines, and so that is my that is my challenge. And so, in the end, we actually ended up doing it as a work in progress, and we, we read out of the scripts, uh, the yes. three of us, which was wonderful. Cool. I love that part. I loved, but um, I, I find it uh, yeah, I find it fascinating that you can do all of that. But so, for each of your productions, where do you get the inspiration? How do you decide that you're going to mm. do a production about? whatever it is. Sure, yeah. sure. Well, I mean, it's certainly a challenge. Uh, you know, as Tom says, there's so many great stories here or, uh, along the river. Sometimes, you know, it's, it, it, it's a matter of, we're going to do this one now, but we've got these three or four in our pocket, you know what I mean, uh, uh, awaiting for the time and the, uh, and the, and the right place. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, I, th I think that's really kind of uh, where we start. Sometimes it's, it's, it's an anniversary, you know, mm -hmm. as, as the, the performance that we're going to be talking about here in a little bit. Yes. Uh, you know, it's, it's just the, the right time. Right. And, you know, uh, we, can, uh, we can build a script around that. And do you have, sorry Vera, do you mm -hmm. have like the general uh, cast return for each one? Like you know who your players are, right? You know who are uh, strong actors in this area. Do you, do you use them frequently or do you try to encourage new members to come on and sort of go on to your training for the role? Oh, I mean, absolutely. I think we're always open to, you yeah, know. anybody trying out? Yeah. I mean, uh, as good. I say, you know, our, our goal um, is again to kind of focus on unique stories, but also, like I say, the, the unique characters of our own day as well and, and mm -hmm. forefront of that local talent. Change them up. Yeah. You know how in schools it's always, it seems to be, when yeah. I was in school, that person always sang. They were always the lead. They were all, you know, it was that mm -hmm. person. But I love the fact that you're doing that and branching out and bringing on new talent mm -hmm. and letting them share the whole experience. Yeah. How long does it take you from start to finish for it, like to, to write for a, like a production and, and get ready to put it on? Well, we've got some experience at it now, so we can be pretty quick. We wrote Mullen's Boom in a couple of weeks, I would say, Sean. Mm -hmm. And after that, the hardest part, of course, is the uh, the rehearsals, getting everybody's schedule worked yes. out, yes. having people, and then also finding venues. We are desperate for I theater know. venues yeah. in the city. Yeah. I, know. I know. Rest in peace, <clears throat> the Vogue. Yeah. I know we all feel it as we drive by it, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Be yeah. grand to have a cultural center. Really, yeah, we've talked about that before. A theater performing, yeah, you know, or absolutely. arts center. Absolutely. It would be awesome. Mullins Boom. Mm -hmm. Is this the new biggest project coming up? It is. Okay, yes. that we want to hear all about it. So uh, yeah, so Mullins Boom takes to the stage uh, on the 29th of April uh, in Renews, the 6th of May in Boys Town, 
and the 13th and 14th of May uh, right here in, uh, in Miramichi at, at MBCC. Okay. Uh, so this, uh, this show talks about, commemorates the bicentennial, the 200th anniversary of the first folk song written on the Miramichi. Oh. Uh, and it's oh. Mullins Boom. Susan Butler must be happy. Well, there you go. <laughs> She'll be really <laughs> ecstatic. Yeah, no kidding. We certainly hope so. Oh, uh, <laughs> for sure. Okay. Wow. And okay, so, um, uh, so how many, how, how big's the cast? There's eight of us all together. Really? Yep. Okay. And what's your role, Thomas? My role is I am Ron Alden, the leader of the American, <laughs> the leader of the American Lumberjacks. Uh, oh. Because this story is based on some local lumberjacks who get in a big fight with some lumberjacks from Maine. They end up cutting logs on disputed land and oh. hilarity ensues. This Obviously. Is, uh, yeah, jailbreak <laughs> comedy. Yep, that's you're right. directing, and would you say that's the lead then? You're the lead role? I would say Sean is probably lead in the Oh, you're an acting, you're directing, both, and you're both we're, directing. We're, we're, we're co 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 directing. Oh, and co 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 <laughs> Lots of co's, co founders. Yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Too cool. But, okay, so NBCC, I've never been to a production there. Okay. okay. So yeah. that's going to be awesome. And I'm, my dad's from Renew, so yes. that's so much appreciated by the Renew, is Ada. <laughs> yeah, much appreciated. I just wanted to ask you what your favorite role, and I want to ask you too, your favorite role to play. Serious, comedic, what do you love? It's a good question. I like uh, both. I lean towards comedy because comedy is easier. It comes mm. maybe a little more naturally, mm -hmm. but I also do love playing dramatic things too. Yeah. When you can make somebody cry, <laughs> With, for the right reasons, of course. Yes. Uh, it, yeah. <laughs> I should clarify. Let's emphasize. Yeah. Let's emphasize. Yeah, you okay. know you've really tapped into something yeah. emotionally with them. And yeah. hopefully, uh, the next thing you'll see me in this coming summer is for the mm -hmm. Irish Festival. It oh, is, there's so much coming for you. Yeah, Sea of Suffering, which is based upon the tragedy of the Lushtak ship. And it'll be a one-man show, me portraying Captain uh, John Mount Thane, who was the captain of that ship, and what he witnessed on board and the terrible mm -hmm. suffering. Oh, interesting. That, I can't wait. So that's a big in. role. That's a big Big job, but you're gonna yeah. do it. You're gonna pull it off. I, I hope so. I've been practicing this one for a while, and uh, I've been working on it uh, at Middle yeah. Island for a number of years. But it's going to be good to finally get it up on stage in front of a good. How uh, wonderful! Because you're president of the Irish Festival. I am this year, yeah. And so you have it's him on board. <laughs> yeah. That's a great. Thing it's the 40th, 40th um, uh, year for the festival, so we wanted to expand and and uh, do some family friendly things and you know it, it's wonderful to have the pubs we love the pubs for sure but we want everybody to enjoy the weekend and young people would enjoy that too oh, absolutely. they would learn yeah. they would laugh they would old. cry they would you know yeah. be very taken with it sean what about you you've done so much as well what about your favorite part uh, directing writing acting is it like you can't just have one that you love the like you know sure i mean it's, you, it's all got its appeal no you question love them all. yeah but uh but I guess, like I say, um, with, the, with, with the possible exception of Cletus the Lumberjack, who is kind of really my alter ego anyway. <laughs> okay. You know what I, I mean? Think, so. I think I've seen Cletus in, uh, maybe, did you do a thing with um, uh, the Governor's uh, Mansion? I believe I did. Yeah, yeah, I think I was there. <laughs> so uh, he, he he gets around that guy. Yeah. Uh, but with the huh. with 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 him being an exception, I think you know it's it, it's always fun to it's always fun to play a role that's that's multifaceted, like mm. like uh, like Thomas says. You know, I think um, so often we see the uh, we see a, a, a figure as kind of being one thing or another, dramatic, comedic, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. But I think you know we found in our own time the ability for a lot of these historical characters to be so layered that there are yeah. opportunities for, for humor, but there's also opportunities for, for high drama as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can't wait. How do you balance out your life? You both have very busy lives. Writing alone is a task, you know, that's very time consuming, and then acting and producing, and then you have other lives besides that. How, what do you find is your best balance with so much going on in life? That's a good question. Uh, just. Breathe. <laughs> prioritize. Have fun, prioritize. Yeah, of course, find time for friends. I'm lucky I get to work so close yeah. with Sean because he's my very best friend. Yeah. So uh, spend time with family, my wife, keep us yeah. 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 Just you need to seek that out though. Or yeah. nothing seems to really get productive unless you do find time for you first. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? And, and I think, think it's think hard. It's hard, right? Because you get so involved in the passion yes. of the projects that you have on the go and Judy and I are like that yep, with our all volunteer work sometimes sure. yeah it can be it can be a lot yeah and I think it's important to trust in the process as well you know I mean we've been talking about this for 10 years but it took us 10 years to get to where we are right you know and I think now is now is the right time we're at a point in our lives when we can we can do this I mean 10 years ago 
it was a great idea. Yes. Mm -hmm. But were we in a position to be able to 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 get this to where it needed to go? Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe not. Yeah. You know. And so we, uh, we have the connections with enough people, and I think we're old enough that people finally take us serious. You know, we didn't go away. <laughs> <laughs> we're still doing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I know. Because a lot of people tell you you're crazy to do this sort of thing, but right. hey, we're still doing it. We're still, uh, we're still going. If you love yeah. it, you love it. Sure. It's yeah. an innate thing for me oh, to absolutely. perform. Yeah. I, I just, I think I was born like you guys to do stage and yeah. and either make people mm -hmm. laugh or make people cry. Well, you're very good at it. Well, I enjoy you're it. You're very good. You at have it. to, have, you have to have a passion to do well at anything, whether it's writing or or teaching or whatever. Of course. Are you going to stay around, Mary Michelle? Are you settled here now? You're not going we're too far away here. again? No, we are. I'm on the same patch of land that's been in my family for nice. five, six. Generation. Oh my goodness! So, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm not one of We're That's glad amazing. to hear that. Um, what about you, Sean? As far as like, like, do you continuously look for things? Like, Vernie alluded to the fact that you're looking into history and what could be a good production. But are you right now, even though you're in the midst of this, looking down the road at next year? Are you always projecting ideas into that head to to write about? Sure, absolutely. I mean, okay. it's uh, it's a great advantage that you know I get to I get to do this kind of you know, for, for, for business, but also for fun, but yep. also the fact that my day-to-day -day job is also about historical right. research. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it, 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 it's great that those things can kind of cross-pollinate yeah. one another. Best of both worlds. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. As, and the Linkage, um, Linkages project, so that's been ongoing now for about a, a year, is it? Or? About a year and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, that, and it's going well? Like it, it is. Yeah, it's um, been interesting for you? It has, certainly. Okay. I mean, it, we've had such great conversations with different people from as far away as New Zealand, and, you know, we're, we're, having, uh, we're having some great conversations with the Quebec Labrador Foundation and other groups that are really interested in partnering uh, with Mayor Machi. So That's amazing. Very, yeah. very good. We're yeah. down to our last little bit of time. In fact, we're, we're running out. Uh, any last words from you, Thomas? Anything, any message? Yes, please. F please. Please, please like and follow and share yes. our uh, Facebook page, Character Matters Mere Machine. We're on Facebook and Instagram, so help us get the word out about this brand new business and all of the productions that we have coming up. Amazing. Character Matters Mere Machine has a real special ring to it. I can't I love it. I can't Any last words, Sean? Well, uh, I echo what Tom says, and also, of course, uh, pay attention. Uh, we've got a We've, th th there's a specter rising from uh, French Fort Cove. Woo! The Headless Nun Tour is on its way back, uh, and we're going to be behind it. So uh, uh, stay tuned for those updates as well. Can't wait. And I think we may have just a little bit of time. So would you? <laughs> what would you say to aspiring actors that are timid, but but you know, like I know I was as a kid, like out there, and I didn't have any inhibitions. But what would you say to kids that want to do it but just can't? Any any word? Come find us. Come find us. <laughs> I would really. say Come that find us. Yeah. you would well, you would groom them. You would hone that skill out yep. of them and, and sure, let them certainly. be part of it. Like I see some talent, I will groom the hell out of them for sure. Mm. Because we uh, there's so many talented young people that are. I would say, Sean, I don't think I'm saying anything you wouldn't agree with. That this generation is probably better mm -hmm. actors than mm -hmm. we were sure, at their age. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Knowledge, right? Yeah. They get so much that yeah. knowledge yeah. off of every source, media. Well, it's everywhere, right? Yeah. They learn yeah. fast. They learn yeah. fast. Yeah. Do you guys yeah. sing at all? Do you do musicals? or? This is a musical. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> is it? Of course, based around the folk song, we've got uh, we've got a fair few songs oh in there too. Oh my gosh, so, we yeah. cannot I wait! So wait. thank you to <laughs> Thomas Daly, Sean McCarthy, and of course Veronique, and all of you for watching. Have a chat today. It's been awesome having you guys on. And link on. Go to their Facebook page. Character Matters Miramichi to find out more. Thank you, everybody. Have a great week and put that chocolate away. You've had enough since Easter. <laughs> no, I Talk haven't. soon. <laughs> See you next week. No, I haven't. <laughs>